Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to learn how to play uh, Mashawi. I think that's how you pronounce it, or Orkney Tale. And it's going to be one to two players, and it's going to be played, published by Dragon Dawn. And in this game, you're going to be playing either solo or cooperatively, trying to escape a burial mound that you've fallen into during a storm. And you're going to try to do that without starving. So let's go ahead down the table here, and I'll give you an uh, idea how to play Mashawi. Mashawi. Alright, so this is Michelle, and then Michelle here you're going, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but in this game you're going to have these components here. You're going to have your main deck in here. You're going to have these 18 expansion cards that you can use in the game if you want here, and they have these little symbols on here, and they all have different themes. Uh, it's recommended that you do not use these expansion cards to start with, uh, but uh, you can mix them in to increase the difficulty of the game. Uh, later on uh, so 18 different cards you can use in there and like each of these are going to have their little sets and they're going to be separated by this little symbol here to show you which set they belong to so you could use these if you want know that they exist in there and once you go through first couple games on here you're probably going to be shuffling these in and again you probably just want to start with one expansion but then you can add more as time goes by if you want now setup for the game is pretty simple here you're going to pick whether you're playing solo or two player. If you're playing two player, you're going to have two health gauges on here, and you'll have two hands of cards as you play. Um, you'll have still one few food limit, but if you're going to play with the two player here, you're going to set it up this way, and you're going to put your hearts all the way across here. So you have four hearts. You'll return these blue hearts to the box if you're not playing for. Um, two players because you won't need those extra hearts and you won't need this Jarl token here. Now this little Jarl token here, what it does in the two player game is effectively will allow you to skip your turn if you need to. We're going to go over the solo game, but in the two player game, what you would have done is one of the players is going to have this. And if you notice that you're going to die or cause the game to end, you can always uh, pass this Jarl token to the other player and skip your turn and let the other player go. Uh, instead of you. So that's the point of that one. And it's going to be similar rules to this solo version here, where you're trying to excavate all these tokens that you placed out based on difficulty and trying not to die. So the hearts will go out like that. Uh, you would decide whatever expansions you want to put into the deck here and then shuffle it up. Like I said, for the first game, you don't want to put really any of them in. You're going to place out the health tokens like I showed you, and then you're going to place out one food token. So I'm going to place out one food token, so I'm starting the game with one food. Now the passage tokens. Now these passage tokens here, you're going to decide what you want the difficulty of the game to be. For your first game, you could do three. That is going to be easy, so you'll be able to finish the game here and win. Uh, if you place down uh, four of these, it's going to be... Um, medium if you do five it's going to be hard and if you do any more here it's going to be epic now i do recommend that scale this up if you're playing the two-player game because the two-player game is much easier than the solo game so i would say in the two-player game easy is four um medium is five and hard is six uh, although it still just says it as i did before but the, like I said, the two-player game there is a little easier than the solo game. All right, so you're going to dedicate uh, some space here for a card row. And you're going to dedicate some space for a discard pile. So I'll have a card row here. I'll have my deck here, and this will be my discard pile. If you ever run out of this deck here, and uh, you'll end up losing the game uh, because you won't be able to shuffle the discard pile into the deck there because you need to have five of the same rune symbol which i'll show you in a little bit to be able to do that now gameplay in this game is pretty simple you're going to draw five cards okay and on your turn you're really only going to be able to do two things you're going to pick one card to play and one card to discard now i will mention that uh one of these is a gruesome card here that shows you showing a um uh, the goose getting slaughtered uh 
So I'll try to not have that shown, but uh, know that it's there. So you have two different effects on here. You have the plate effect, which is gonna be this, the plate effect right here. And then you're going to have the discard effect. Uh, so with the X's on the hearts, that means that you're going to lose health. Uh, some of these are gonna have pluses. So if I, let's say I played this card, I would gain a health. Now, one thing that we're trying to do in this game here is we're trying to get these excavation cards out. All right, so what we're trying to do here is we're gonna to try to get four of these excavation ones. Now, it'd be best if we got four excavation cards with the same symbol on top here. If we get four excavation cards with the same symbol on here, we'll be able to excavate two of these instead of one. But if we get four of the same, then we'll be able to exec uh, exec um, excavate uh, at least one of these. So like I said, it has a play effect. This has no discard effect, so I probably don't want to play this. Also, things need to be unbroken. So once I start doing this, I'm going to need to keep doing this. Uh, one of the other things you're going to look out for in my hand here is you're going to look at these rune symbols. You notice that I have uh, three of these blue runes and I have two red. If I ever have all the same rune symbol in my hand, I go mad, I have to discard my hand. Uh, I lose a health permanently, so one of these will go back into the box here. And But I get to just take my discard pile and shuffle it in into my deck there so I can stay alive a little longer. So let's say I want to play this one. So if I play this card here, I could gain a health. I'm at full health, so that's not a good idea. So maybe we don't want to play that one card. Maybe I want to get rid of some of these cards here. So if we look at this card right here and this card's effect, it's going to take away two of my health, but it also has these symbols right here. So what do those mean? Well, this is super bad. This is adding more blockage to the tunnel. Uh, so I would lose two health and I would add two blockage to the tunnel because this is a tunnel collapse. So I'm actually wanting to discard this card because it'll just take away one of my health. So I'll set that off to the side there. And now I still need to play a card. So I could play this card and gain back a health. And I'll draw back up to two cards. So now I'm back at my five cards here. Oh, now I have two of these tunnel cards. So that's really cool. Um, this one here, uh, I, if I play this card here, I will be able to, um, lo I'll lose all my food. If I discard this card, I'll lose a health. So I may want to start playing uh, these cards here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll discard this one here. I'll lose a health and I'll play. I'll start trying to do my unbroken run of these cards here. So now I'll draw two cards. All right. Ooh, that's even better. So um, this goose will give me an extra goose, but I don't want to play it yet. Uh, so I don't want to show this one on camera here, but I can discard this card to no effect. This would have gone on top normally, but I'm going to put it on the bottom so you don't have to see it. And then I will play a card. I'll play this one. Now I draw up two cards. And I have to make a decision here. I'm going to still go along with excavating, so I'm going to play this card. And then I'll go ahead and discard... Ooh, I will discard this card and lose a health. So now I'll draw two cards. What did I get? Well, I didn't get really what I wanted, but I need to play this card. So I'm going to play this card. And now I have four of these. I can do one excavation. And that's done. All right, so then... We then I have to discard a card. I'll discard this card and lose a health. And now I'm starting to get in trouble. I need to start gaining health. Uh, again, you have to watch when you draw up here to see what these symbols are. So if I played these two cards and I got two red, I would go mad. I take my discard pile and I would shuffle it up and draw five new cards. But basically we're gonna continue on until we can either escape uh, our tomb here uh, that we fell into, or uh, I lose my last health and die. All right, so a couple notes here. So there's a two-player co-op version, which I said before here uses this board in here. Each player is going to have five cards, and you're going to play through. Now the downfall to the 
uh, two-player version is you're burning through this deck a little fast. The good thing about the two-player version is you have so many more resources you get to use. You still have a common shared line of cards here that you'll be using. And um, trying to do excavations and stuff with that. Uh, and you all have each have your own uh, health, but neither of you can die in the game. So you don't want to make sure that you both stay alive throughout the game. So there is also going to be a two-player um, fear of the dark version. In this variance, uh, players are not allowed to talk or communicate about the state of the uh, game or the cards in the hand. This one you definitely want to use. It's the two-player one's pretty easy, even with adding in all these cards, even with adding the difficulty. Definitely don't allow communication with a two-player game. Uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. There is also, I'll mention, a really nice guide to all the cards in the game there. Um, so it's really handy. Uh, you might go through this uh, once. Uh, but once you have this, this game is pretty uh, easy to pick up. So uh, you only need to do that once. And then the very back here, it gives a little bit more background because this is actually a true story here. And then... Uh, this is going to be all the symbols and what their effects are in the game too. So you have this back of the um, uh, book also. So that's it. Uh, that's going to be how you play. Uh, let's go ahead back up to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on this game. All right, so that was Michelle. That's an orc detail. In this game here, I believe that a solo game is the best game. I think that's where you're going to get the difficulty in. Playing two players in this game seemed to be very easy, even if you ratchet up the difficulty, still, still seemed to be very easy. It's that solo game uh, where this thing shines and where I think it should be played at. Uh, if you don't mind, some the uh, cards in the game, I, I actually like all the cards in the game except for the, the Goose Slaughter card, if you're okay with that, or you know, just cover over the card and play the game because it is a really good puzzle of a game. There's a lot of meaningful decisions you need to make in the game and it's a really a lot of fun. And you can add in those other expansion cards to change it up there and make it more or less difficult. So you could get a lot of replayability in the solo version of this game, which I do appreciate a lot. So if you're looking for a good puzzly solo game, uh, I would, don't think I would recommend this as a two-player game, but a puzzly solo game, I would highly recommend checking this out. And that's my thoughts on it. Thank you for watching. <laughs>